say, oh, well, wait a second. There's no way that I can solve this for y unless I use a logarithm. So I would say, okay, well then, log base 2 of x would equal y. Are you okay on that so far? I hope so, because you just raised your hand if you were okay on translating these to logarithms. That's translating the logarithms, right? And we knew from before that this y would be written as f inverse. you follow me on that one? Mm -hmm. So you'd have f inverse of x would equal log base 2 of x. Hey, that's a function in terms of x. That's something I should be able to graph. That right there is one example of a logarithmic function. In general, logarithmic functions look like this. Of course, they have a name of a function. They're going to have a logarithm in there. They'll have some sort of base, and then they'll have some function in terms of x, log base b of x. Now, what's very interesting is that every logarithmic function comes from an exponential. It's an inverse of some exponential. Just like this logarithmic function, look at that, that's an inverse, right? It's an inverse of 2 to x. It's the inverse of that thing. That's how you get it, is it's an inverse. So in every case, a logarithmic function will have a logarithm, will have some sort of base, but this is always an ex uh, inverse of some exponential. It's the inverse of some exponential function. Now let's go ahead, we'll graph one of these things. I want you to get the idea about, about how this looks. Uh, I'll refresh your memory on what exponentials look like, and we'll see a very distinct relationship between them. x equals b to the x. Is that a logarithmic or an exponential? exponential. That's definitely exponential. It has no logarithm any, anywhere in there, right? Now, these graphs had two shapes. Do you remember the different shapes you could have for your exponentials? I, I sure hope you do. Were they down here? No. no. They were definitely above our x-axis, right? Mm -hmm. One of them went... One of them went... Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you remember the sound effect, don't you? And that's a real good way to, well, the way I memorize these all the way through in math classes. And one of them looked like this, roughly. One of them looked like this, roughly. One of them, the base was greater than one. One of them, the base was less than one. But the base was always greater than zero. It was never negative. If it was negative, it would be below the x-axis. You have a negative in front of it. What's this one? B greater than 1 or less than 1? Mm -hmm. This one, less than 1. But in each case, they crossed at the same point unless you shifted them around. You remember talking about those shifts? Mm -hmm. You saw the up, down, left, right shift. I told you that last bit of class last time. They all crossed at, what was this point again? 0, 1. That's right, because when you raise anything to the 0 power, you get 1 out of it. Now, what we're going to talk about are logarithms, the inverses to these things. Now, this would be so cool, I'm going to tell you about inverses. Do you remember inverses are simply a reflection across a diagonal line? So basically, if I draw a diagonal line right here, and right here, y equals x, and I flip this, that should be a logarithm. And I flip this. That should also be a picture of a logarithm. You ready for it? Ready to see it? 
We're going to do this pretty quickly. We're going to make a table of this thing. I'm going to talk about f of x equals log base 2 to the x to keep it easy. And one third base x. To make it a little bit easier for us to get, instead of f of x, I'm going to talk about y. Hey, by the way, could you write that as an exponential? This right here would say 2 to the y would give you x, right? So over here I typically have y's and I typically have x's. But here's a deal to make these tables that you have to do them backwards because they're inverses. We're going to have y's over here, we're going to have 2 to the y right here. Instead of plugging in x's and getting y's, because that's hard to do, we're going to plug in y's and we're going to get x's. It's going to be backwards to what we, we normally would do. So with my, with my y's, I want to check for 0, 1, 2, and negative 1. We'll see what happens there. So notice that instead of plugging in my x's, I am plugging in y's first. I, I wrote it as an exponential, and I'm plugging in y's over here to get the picture of this graph. So if I plug in 0, everybody, what is 2 to the 0, please? They still give me a point, didn't it? This x, that's y. I'm just finding x a little bit differently. Let's plug in 1. What's 2 to the first power, please? Okay. How about 2? What's 2 to the second power? How about this one? Oh, this is interesting. What's negative 1? 2 to the negative 1 gives you what? 1 half. Do you still have points? Yeah. Don't lose track of your x's and y's. They're still in the correct order. If I plot these points, if I plot these points, I get 1, 0. I get 2, 1. I get 4, 2. Do you see what that side of the graph looks like? It's going to go, looks like that. This side of the graph, if I plug in 1 half, if I plug in 1 half over here, try one more. 2 to the 1 half is a square root of 2. That's 1.41. Oh, sorry, uh, let's see. I wanted, no, I don't want one half. I want negative one. If I plug in negative one, that means I'm going to get, oh, I already did that. Didn't I? Oh, genius. Yeah, I already did it twice. <laughs> I forgot I had that on the board. I was looking right at it. How funny is that? Okay, if I plug in one half, I get negative, oh, that's what that does. Is this ever going to go to this side? of my graph, do you think? No. Here's the interesting part. I want you to look back up here. This is the inverse of some exponential with b greater than 1. Look how b, b is greater than 1. This went above the x-axis all the time. This is going to be to the right of the y-axis all the time. Do you remember when you found inverses, you switched your x and y? That's, we're switching the principles now. We're going to have this graph. For b greater than 1. We're running out of time, so I'm not going to be able to do this one the whole way through here. If this is my logarithm with b greater than 1, do you see how we're going to have this one for b less than 1? b is always greater than 0, it's never negative. But I'm going to have this graph. By the way, I, want you to, I do want you to see this. If this graph crosses at 0, 1, and this graph crosses at 0, 1, what are these graphs always going to cross at? 
one zero. You flip x and y, right? That's how you find an inverse. So these are all going to cross at one zero. This is for your base less than one. This is for your base greater than one. You take this, you flip it across the x-axis, you're going to get this picture. Or, sorry, uh, y equals x line. If you take this and flip it across your y equals x line, you're going to get that picture. It's going to flip that across that diagonal line. How many people understand the graphs of these, these things, these logarithmic functions? They're inverses, they're reflections across the line of y equals x. 